Hey everybody, how's it going? My name's Mayuko and welcome back to my channel where we talk about tech, career, and life. Today's video is the last and final part of a three-part resume video series where I critique my own resumes from the past. In the first video, I critiqued like my first ever resume. And in the second one, I reviewed the one that got me my first real software engineering internship. And so finally, today I'm gonna to be showing you my critique of the resume that got me my job at a startup in Silicon Valley called Patreon and for my job at Netflix. So like the other two videos, maybe number one, you're watching this video to get some inspiration on how to format and write your own resume. Or number two, you're just nosy, you're a little bit curious, and you just wanna know what my resume looked like. And maybe there's like a third and final part. I don't know, but I'm excited that you're here, so let's get started. Moving on to resume number three. So this resume was written in the spring of 2016. So this was a few years after the previous one. I was switching jobs out of Intuit and this was a resume that I used to apply to Patreon. As you can see, it's just like so much more simpler than my previous ones. Like the margins are fine. It's not like completely packed with information. Um, but I do still have a couple of critiques about this one. So I start with my name and then I write iOS software engineer. Cause at this point I know what specific part of software engineering I want to go into. And so I thought it was really important for me to write that on this resume. I've got my contact info on the left side, which I think is like a pretty good use of space. And then I do this whole like two column stuff, which I was experimenting with, which I think went well, except for um, just the header lines are really hard to read. Like I write what my role was, the program, the application, the company, and my duration all in one line, which is just like, it's impossible to read this. I also am just like completely missing bullet points on this, which I think I actually added them in, but the color I think is just so faded that it doesn't show up in print format. One thing that I remember I did for this resume that I was like so proud of was that the colors that I used for this resume are the default colors in Xcode, which is the official IDE for iOS development. I thought that was kind of clever because I was like, hey, look at me. I'm like an Apple person. I'm one of y'all. Let's like show you this through like the colors that I used in my resume. So it kind of just looks like you're looking at your Xcode IDE and it looks a little bit more familiar. I have no idea whether that worked at all or not, or like if anybody else appreciated it, but I liked it and I thought that was cool. In this resume, I finally got way more specific about the work that I did. So saying things like designed and implemented the view model for business logic that integrated with the model and APIs and thoroughly tested using unit and integration tests. Like as an iOS engineer, I know exactly what that means and I can kind of imagine what that work was. And so it gives me a sense of like, okay, this is the exact work that she did and that comes through to me very clearly. The only place that I feel like I wasn't specific enough was when I talked about driving various technology spikes to explore and assess different technologies and its implications. I would have liked to know like, what kinds of technologies did you explore? At the time, React Native was really big. And so I think as a recruiter, it would have been cool to see like what other technologies within or outside of iOS were you able to experiment with and have knowledge about. Because yeah, at the time everyone was like, should I go into React Native? Should I not? Like, should we have a bit of the app be in React Native? So there's not much more to highlight about the work experience part. I think I solved a lot of the issues from before in this one. And then in the skills part, I just wanted to highlight, it says excellent teamwork and communication skills, no longer diplomatic teamwork and communication skills. I talk about awards that I've won, which I won an award for like a internal hackathon thing. Uh, called the Intuit Create the Offering Innovation Award, but it was entirely internal. And so one note that I have for myself is like, what is it? Like, what is this conference? What is this award? What did you make for it? Um, I think I would have liked to know a little bit more because chances are the recruiter, whoever's looking at the resume, didn't work get into it and has no idea what this award is. So yeah, unless it's like an award that people just like have heard of and it's common and stuff, I think it's important to elaborate what exactly that thing was. So yeah, that's resume number three. This is the resume that got me into Patreon. Uh, and I, I think it's very nice. I've, I'm very fond of this one, especially the color part just gets me, um, but I'm pretty proud of this one. 
Uh, hold up real quick. So while I did turn in my resume to Netflix, I actually didn't cold apply to Netflix like I did my other jobs. I actually got into the interviewing process through networking with one of the engineering managers for the iOS team. So I actually don't give this resume that much credit, but I turned it in and they didn't say no. I actually think this kind of attests to the power of networking for getting a job in the tech industry, but I just wanted to put it out there as a disclaimer. Now we get into my most recent resume, which I used to apply to Netflix. So I was getting kind of bored of just like the text-based format at this point. And so I downloaded a resume template, which I thought looked really cool. But honestly, my first impression of this is literally, I wrote this on the bottom, the layout sucks. Uh, I think for many reasons, Number one, the spacing is kind of weird. It's actually supposed to be on a longer piece of paper. And so when it's on this, it's like kind of smushed and there's like weird margins that happen. The colors, I probably wouldn't opt for this kind of color uh, if I was to print on stuff. But also at this time, I feel like resumes weren't often printed and instead they were often sent through job portals or PDFs and stuff. And so it didn't really matter at the time. But now that I'm looking at it on paper, I'm like, ugh. It's like ugly, <laughs> which you never know if a recruiter is going to print your resume. So maybe it's good to like have something that works for both the PDF format and a print format. And then, yeah, the, the margins, like why, why, why are the margins all so gross? Like, ugh. Um, I liked this resume because I like put a picture of myself, which a lot of people say it's not necessary, but I don't know. I like being able to like put a name to a face when I'm looking at other resumes. And I also put a little bit of an about section to talk a little bit more about what my passions are and why I'm in technology, which I think is important to talk about. My experience takes up the most of this resume. Um, and at this point I had worked at Patreon for a couple of years. And so I wrote down a lot of the stuff that I worked on. Some feedback that I have though, is that I say I re-architected major parts of the app to be more flexible, extensible, and testable. I would ask like, how? Like, how did you do that? What specific architectures did you adopt or um, patterns did you introduce into the app that helps it to do that? And then I say reduce the bug backlog by 43% in two months, which they say you should put like data in your resume to show that like you can make results. But I'm just like, how? Like, how did you reduce it? Did you fix all of them? Did you triage it? Cause that's a big difference. I know what the answer is. I triage them, but I just wanted numbers on my resume. So I just did that. And then the last thing was I say, introduce Scrum on project team by educating and implementing the practice and serve as Scrum master or coordinator. I think that's fine as it is actually, but I maybe would have said something more along the lines of helped the team to adopt the Scrum methodology and like onboard them instead of having it sound like I forced Scrum on them because it was a mutual decision, but I think the language could have been a little bit more massaged there. So yeah, like my experience at Intuit is a little bit more condensed than the previous one. I at my skills, which are way more specific to iOS development at this point. And this is the first time that I highlighted my YouTube channel. So yeah, this is actually my most recent resume. I kind of need to make a new one, um, which includes my experience at Netflix, which maybe I'll make into another video about my most recent resume. Um, but these four resumes have been a really important part of my career and it was really fun to kind of like go through them and critique them. So I think one of the really important lessons we've learned in critiquing resumes and looking at my resumes is that it's really just important to get experience and build skills. And one way to do that is through the plethora of online courses out there, which is where I wanted to thank the sponsor of today's video, Brilliant. Brilliant is a problem solving based website and app with a hands-on approach with over 60 interactive courses in math, science, and computer science. All of Brilliant's courses have storytelling, code writing, interactive challenges, and problems to solve. I really like the way that Brilliant does this because the concepts stick and it feels like you're actually gaining skill through doing their courses. Like maybe you're interviewing for jobs right now. They have an algorithms interactive solvables course as well as a computer science fundamentals course. So make sure to check out Brilliant and go to brilliant.org slash hellomayuko for 20% off an annual premium subscription today. All right, everybody, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed this one and the two others. If you haven't caught those ones, I'll leave it in the description box down below. Make sure to subscribe to my channel for more tech, career, and lifestyle videos, and I will see you next time. Bye.